Good afternoon, folks. Uh, thanks for joining us today. My name is Steve, and this year today it's uh, my colleague Olivia. She's sharing one of our yearly news. Her name is Rubu, and we're uh, showing this activity today from the Linda Mars Livestock Facility, and we're coming up in the month of June on a one-year anniversary. So it's pretty much a brand new barn that's really greatly uh, improved how we're able to do our job the animals. Typically, when it's not a uh, coronavirus year, we'd be shearing our sheep down on the Pioneer Farm site of Mount Vernon uh, as a demonstration for the visitors. So we do it uh, between uh, 10 and 12 and 1 and 3, uh, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. But of course, this year, uh, we are not open to the public. But shearing is an activity that needs to take place no matter what. Thousands of years ago, wild sheep used to shed their wool. Nobody went out and sheared wild sheep. Nature just took care of itself. They would, like a dog or cat, they would shed their, their fleece. But centuries ago, when humans decided that wool was a practical, useful thing, they started selectively breeding sheep to not shed their fleece. So you have an animal that's sort of a man-made animal that needs to be tended to uh, once a year. And it seems that in Washington's time, May was the shearing month, he had itinerant shearers come in. It's possible that some of the enslaved people here were shearing. And so we also do our shearing in the month of May. Now the position that you see the sheep in is the traditional sheep shearing position. You sort of want them up on their rump and it keeps their legs off the, off the floor. Because if they think they can get their legs on the floor, they're going to try to get away. And you can see Olivia is using the shears and starting on the belly of the animal. So you can kind of think about it like a jacket. She's going to open it up down the middle. And then that'll create really nice lines that she'll just be able to sort of do what's called the long blows along the side of the, uh, sides of the shape. This sheep is a ewe, a female, and she was born last year. So this would be actually her first shearing, and uh, many times that's regarded as the nicest fleece that the sheep will ever produce. You'll also notice the shears that Olivia is using. They're called hand shears. Uh, of course, today many people use uh, electric clippers for shearing sheep, and we have them and we've tried them. But the sheep that we have here produce a lot of lanolin, which is like a grease, and all it does is really clog up the electric clippers. So we actually find most of us have a lot more experience with the hand shears, and we find that with this breed of sheep, that it actually works a lot better. It takes a little longer, but it's a little less traumatic for the sheep. Electric clippers heat up, and it's a lot easier to make sort of a big mistake when you're using electric clippers versus the hand shears. We get our shears today from a company in England that's called Bourbon and Ball, and they were actually in business in Sheffield, England during Washington's lifetime. So it's entirely possible he was getting his shears from the exact same place that we're getting ours today. Today they're sold in garden catalogs, it's little, you know, grass trimmers or whatever. Uh, but we, of course, use them for what they're intended for. We do have a question from our audience. So Pat asks, do the sheep bite when being sheared? Uh, sheep generally don't bite. Uh, Sometimes we uh, end up getting quite bruised because they can kick pretty hard, especially with their back legs. And this is one of the benefits to keeping the sheep in this position. Sometimes we get an animal that's slightly overweight or maybe a little more than slightly. In this position, it's not tolerable for them, so you have to lay them down. And that's when you're sometimes more likely to end up getting kicked. They have quite a bit of force behind their back legs. Olivia, do you know the record for hand sharing? Is it something like five, like five or six minutes? 
Yeah, so of course your, your, the pace at which, you, at which you can shear varies greatly on your depending on your skill. My fastest sheep uh, was sheared in 23 minutes. We have other people here that are under 20 minutes, including Olivia. So uh, she's actually studied under professional shears to try and improve her uh, skill and her time. We also have another question here. It's a two-part question. So when do you know when it's time to shave them? And can they be a family pet? I think uh, the sheep can be considered sort of a pet. Uh, we have right now this year one bottle baby. The mom wasn't willing or able to take care of the lamb. So we essentially had to adopt the lamb and feed it out of the bottle. And now, you know, anytime we go in the pen, that lamb runs away from the other sheep and comes up to us. And so, I mean, in a sense, yeah, you can uh, sort of get them to be very, very friendly to people. Uh, in that case, it's just a matter of necessity. Sorry, what was the other half of the question? The first half of the question was, when do you know when it's time to shave them? Well, in Virginia, you pretty much want to shear them once a year. So Washington's records indicate that he was doing it during the month of May. So that's when we always shear our sheep as well, during the month of May. Because by the time it gets to be, you know, six months down the road, October, whatever, they're going to actually need the wool again, so you wouldn't want to shear them twice. Jennifer asks, what is this sheep's name? This sheep's name is Rehubu, and Rehubu uh, a river in Africa and so every year when we name our lambs we have a theme and last year the theme was rivers of the world this year our theme is Dr. Seuss you know one year we had colleges one year we had cities so you can see how she's really keeping the shears quite close to the animal uh, you want to get you know, as much of that wool cut as you can. Uh, what makes the wool good for spinning is called the staple. And the staple is the actual length of the fiber from the skin out to the outer edge of the fleece. So uh, the longer the staple, the easier it is going to be, the more desirable for spinners to use to spin into yarn. We have another question from our audience here. How much does all of the wool weigh once it comes off? It can vary greatly. I think most of our sheep produce a fleece that's somewhere from three to five pounds. One of the most common questions we get when we're doing this in front of our visitors is whether or not it hurts the sheep. And of course, I'm sure that this sheep would probably rather be doing something else right now, standing in a pasture, eating grass. But no, it doesn't hurt the animal, and it, actually it's beneficial to the animal because she's not going to shed that wool, and it's already getting really hot here in Virginia. And you know, over time, it could really take its toll on the animal if you didn't shear it. We have a question here from Michelle. Are any of the fleeces sold to hand spinners? Yes, that's what we, we do that, uh, sell most of our fleeces to hand spinners, that's right. It's a rare breed of sheep, they're called Hog Island sheep, and it's a very hard breed to get a hold of. So if you're a hand spinner and you want to say, oh wow, I was able to spin you know, wool from a Hog Island sheep, there's only a handful of places you can go to get it. And we have, for me, still the largest registered flock of Hog Island sheep anywhere in the country. Hog Island refers to a small barrier island off the uh, eastern shore of Virginia. And back in the 1600s or thereabouts, sailors left sheep on the island. They basically became feral, and they were just named after the island. And of course, in modern time, the island was bought by the Nature Conservancy. They didn't want the sheep there, you know, sort of ruining the island. So they removed, they removed them all, and Mount Vernon was one of the places that stepped up and bought a lot of them to help save them and conserve them.
Alex asks, do they fight when getting sheared? Which... Yeah, sometimes they do fight. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's one of, it really varies greatly. Like, the one time I had uh, my record of 23 minutes, the sheep just sat there for the entire thing, and it was, like, amazing. But you also get ones that are really feisty. I would say, sort of maybe, in general, the adult rams are probably the feistiest. And of course, they're the biggest and the strongest and when they tick and stuff. And a lot of them have horns, you know, you can get hit with a horn and other things. But uh, yes, their personality varies greatly from animal to animal. Jennifer asks, how do you shear the sheep without cutting its skin? Uh, Olivia is a very good shearer, so I can't speak for her, but when I'm shearing, I would say that I inevitably get mixed, but I don't think of that as any different as, you know, nicking yourself if you're shaving or whatever, and then you, know, you can put uh, something on it if you like that. But the sheep's skin secretes adrenaline, and it's actually a natural antiseptic, so it's just a little nick or whatever. Most of the times, you really don't even have to uh, put anything on it because the land will take care of it. Adam asks, what do you use the wool for nowadays? Well, when we are doing demonstrations for the public when we're open, normally, uh, we're going to work down on the farm site and in the uh, weaving shed, and they will take the wool and they'll process it, clean it, cart it, you know, make it into yarn, and then uh, weave it into garments. I have a scarf that was made here that I wear in the winter time. So uh, it's definitely used for demonstrations. And then, uh, like you said earlier, a lot of the raw pieces are sold. Ruth Ann asks, how much of the wool is usable? Well, when you get the wool off, and you, the goal is to get the fleece, the entire coat, so to speak, off in one piece, and that obviously helps the animals cooperative. But once you get a whole thing off, you lay it down like sort of a big rug, and you'll usually go around the edges of the fleece and do something called skirting. And that might be like the back end of the sheep or the belly of the sheep. And where the dirtiest parts are, you're gonna more or less just pick that out and remove it. Historically, of course, they would take the pieces and you know you could wash them in uh, sort of a mild soap and some warm water. You don't wanna use really hot water. You don't wanna agitate it. You can felt the wool, but it was, uh, you know, obviously, Clean uh, prior to being made into a garment. So now, Olivia's getting into what's called the long blows. You can see she can kind of make really good time now, going from one end of the sheet all the way up to the other. She's also using gravity to her uh, advantage here. You can see the way she has the sheep lying down right now, how the wool is kind of rolling away. Because one of the things you really do not want to do is pull up on the wool while you're sharing, because then you're also going to pull up on the skin, which makes it a little more likely that you might cut them or mix them. We have a question here from Tiffany. Do you use non-electric clippers to keep with the historic setting? It, it seems that the process might go faster with electric clippers. I guess, it, again, it depends on your skill level. And most of us here, you know, have sort of uh, learned our sharing with the hand shears. I think most of us are probably more comfortable with them. It does take a little bit longer, but, you know, uh, I think in Olivia's case, she'll average less than a half an hour to do a sheep. So that's pretty quick. And, you know, in our case here, it's not so much that we're in a hurry to get it done or whatever. You know, we try to do these things when we are open as a demonstration to visitors. In my case, it usually takes 45 minutes to an hour to shear a sheep. 
and that's not, you know, uh, too long by any means. Jennifer asks, have the sheeps ever gotten away during a shearing? Yes. <laughs> yes, that has happened. <laughs> One year it happened to me, and luckily I had a young high school guy who was with me that day, and he was able to catch the sheep and bring it back. Kareen asks, and this is from her, um, one of her kids. How many sheeps does Mount Vernon have? I don't know the exact number. Uh, we had 33 lambs born just this spring. And I would say before that, we probably had approximately 70 adults. So it's probably somewhere right around 100 total sheep right now. David asks, how often do you shear a sheep? Uh, shearing in Virginia is a once a year activity. And uh, you know, I suppose you could do it at other times of the year, but we do it in May because that's when Washington did it. And that's because we feel that, you know, the weather's gonna be consistently warm now. And of course it gives them the right amount of time to grow the wool back uh, before they'll need it again. Laurel asks, is the sheep sedated? I didn't see from the beginning. No, uh, actually sheep and, uh, don't take well to sedation. So at the beginning when the animal was sitting more up on its behind, its rear end, there was a little bit of hustling and fighting and we actually had a question about whether they fight. But maybe this particular animal prefers or is more comfortable being in this position or whatever. And uh, so she seems to have kind of like relaxed a little bit. But again, if they have a, a sense that they can get their feet on the ground and get up and run away, I don't think that they will hesitate at all. Part of it is how you can see Olivia is standing there and she's got one leg sort of against the animal's breastbone and you're trying to keep her from having that feeling that she can, you know, roll over and get on her. Try to keep them sort of almost rolled over towards their backbone. Suzanne said it's probably a pretty good upper body workout. <laughs> it's a really good back workout. And I'll tell you, if you're not used to having your hamstrings worked out, you'll know you have hamstrings when you're done cheering. Again, this, this is a much more traditional way. Some of the uh, some people have different techniques. They'll lay the sheep down. They'll get down on their knees. I mean, that's even less desirable to me. But. We have a question here from one of our YouTube viewers. Is there an age at which you start shearing the sheep? Or do you shear them their whole lives? Yeah, well, the sheep here are usually born in March, sometimes as late as April. And so the following year in May, when they're just over one year old, that's when they'll get their first shearing. Because when you, when you have a lamb, there isn't really anything to be shorn yet. Carolyn asks, did Washington sell the wool or was it all used at Mount Vernon? I honestly don't know if he sold any of the wool, but I think that the most common uh, use for it was producing blankets and clothes for the slaves. Uh, this is not considered a fine grade wool. So, you know, one of the stereotypes about history is that they made everything that they used and made all their clothes and, you know, they were all self-sufficient. Well, I don't think Washington was going to be walking around with a, a coat or, you know, anything else made out of Hog Island wool. Most of his uh, fabrics would have been imported from England. We have a question here. How do you keep the fleece in one piece as you shear it off of the sheep? I mean, that's part of the skill of the shearer. And it also depends on the uh, cooperation of the animal. So, and, you know, obviously the quicker you can do it, the less likely you're going to have trouble. She's also keeping the fleece nice and it's not anywhere near the legs. 
in my experience, that's the, the worst thing that can happen to the wool if they get it caught up in their legs when they're kicking and then it tears apart. Some of you might notice the sort of yellow tint to the wool and that's actually the lanolin, you can see that. We always joke that uh, shearing the sheep is about the only thing we do all year that's good for your hands because you know, you'll come out and your hands will look like you just rub grease all over them. Cynthia asks, how long on average does it take to shear a typical adult sheep? Again, I mean, that varies greatly. We, we think the world record for hand shears is around five minutes. I mean, I've taken as long as an hour before. Uh, I think in general, we probably mostly hear average around a half an hour to do one sheep. How much wool was able to be produced by Washington's sheep? Well, like everything that Washington was doing with his farming, he was kind of reading up on the latest, you know, new and improved breeds of sheep. And so he was trying to get a hold of a breed of sheep that was called the Lester Long Wool, had a longer wool, a finer wool, and he was trying to sort of bring that in so that he could, you know, breed that into his sort of generic sort of category of sheep. And this hog island is probably very similar. You know, we don't have anything written that Washington says, oh, I have hog island sheep, but we know that these sheep were on that island during his lifetime. And the written descriptions of the sheep that he had very closely resembles uh, this breed of sheep. So she's already on the second side now, and she's working down towards the very back end of the sheep. How does the fleece feel? Good. We have a, a question here. Um, so does Mount Vernon sell any products made from the wool of the sheep on online, on our site? I don't know the answer to that, but I would be very skeptical. I don't think we do. I think when they make things down on the higher farm when we are open, you know, they're made to be part of the costume for the interpreters here. Alex asks, how many sheep can you shear at a time? Sometimes, or like in a shearing day? Why don't we answer both? Okay. <laughs> I can only shear one sheep at a time. And uh, I, my max has been 10. That's about all my back can handle. But it depends on the shear. Yeah, so, aren't there like the professions? Oh, yeah, like professional 100 shear. a day or something? Yeah, easily. Yeah, if you do it for a living, the more shear you can shear, the more money you make. Blaine asks, are the hand shears hard on your hands? No. No, no, they're, they're designed to be pretty, uh, pretty user-friendly. They spring back, so it's pretty pretty easy technology and it doesn't hurt too much. Now, if you did hundreds of sheep, maybe. Joe? Oh, go ahead. Sometimes the uh, grade of the wool, I think, affects how the shears feel. Uh, some of our sheep have a much coarser type fleece, and then I think you will feel a little bit more fatigue in your hands. But in general, when it's a nice sort of softer fleece like this, Joe Marcus has a question here. What are the benefits of using hand shears versus electrical clippers? Well, for one thing, in our case, it's just the comfort and the ease for us because most of us are vastly more familiar with using the hand shears. Uh, when you're using electric shears, they heat up, they make noise, and it's much easier to sort of slip and make a really big mistake with electric clippers. Uh, needless to say, these don't heat up. They don't make a lot of noise compared to the electric clippers. And while we, you know, do acknowledge that sometimes they get nicked, in the case of these clippers, it's usually a very minor cut. 
Christine asks, what tool do you use to sharpen the shears? Do you sharpen the shears after each sheet? Uh, I don't have the experience of needing to sharpen them that often when I'm shearing. Uh, and you just use a sharpening stone uh, to uh, do that. Are these sheep descended from Washington sheep, or did you buy more later on? Uh, we don't have any of the direct descendants of Washington sheep, but like I said earlier, we have uh, a breed of sheep here that was on the island of Hog Island during Washington's lifetime and very closely fits the descriptions of the sheep that he would have had on his property. So uh, we feel that they're a good you know, representative sort of animal uh, for showing what he had in his lifetime. So now she'll just go around and skirt the fleece, take off the really dirty part. Do older sheep produce more wool than younger sheep? Um, I, I wouldn't say so. I don't think so. It's a good question. I honestly don't know. I mean, they're a bigger sheep would produce more wool just simply because of the bigger more surface area. Yeah, but the like this this view here is a yearling, and so she has a much thicker fleece than. Uh, an older ewe who has had a couple lambs because their calories that they eat go into feeding lambs, not making wool. So I think this is quite a bit of wool for a smaller sheep. So I think it kind of evens out. Unless, of course, you know, you're just a big, big, cute sheep. So I'm going to roll this up. Clean on the inside. <laughs> At least we're ready for market. Mm -hmm. Pretty quick. So we're just going to take a couple more questions here, but um, David asks, when they were wild on Hog Island, did their wool grow out of control or does it reach a natural maximum length? I mean, if there was a sheep found in New Zealand years ago that had gotten out into the woods and that wool just kept growing and growing and growing. And they had to shear it in a very sort of special way because they said there was so much wool. It was, almost like gonna tear off the skin or something. So, I mean, it does keep growing, but I think in some cases with wild animals, they're gonna find places to rub off some of it if they can, you know, on bushes or shrubs or whatever they have available. Um, they do, yeah, and wild sheep, they, um, they shed their wool. So it's 
people have it, um, selectively bred sheep to retain wool. So that's why we shear them now. But the wild sheep would definitely have shed their wool or lost it over time, at least enough of it that um, you know it wouldn't have been dangerous for their health. We have our last question for the day here from Cynthia, who asks, where does the wool go next? What are the next steps in the process? Well, I mean, obviously the next step would be uh, washing it. And uh, then you would, once it's washed, of course, you would have to dry again. Then you go through a process called carding with these little wooden uh, cards that have metal sort of needles on them. And that combs out the wool into a small roll called a row lag. And then those could be put on a spinning wheel. The rolls are spun into yarn. And once you have yarn, of course, you can either knit it or weave it into a garment. During a regular, you know, normal sort of season, uh, you'd be able to come to Mount Vernon and see all of these processes including the shearing during the month of May. And then I think you know, throughout the year, they're working with the textiles, uh, demonstrating you know, the production of cloth. I think we're gonna wrap up here. So do you guys wanna give some concluding thoughts for our audience? Sheep, uh, shearing is a necessary part of keeping sheep on a farm um, in order to keep them healthy and happy. Uh, the process with the hand shears is, uh, is pretty easy on the sheep. It's not as easy on the shearer unless you're well practiced, but uh, the sheep don't get hurt in the process. It's like getting a haircut, kind of like going to the spa. I mean, they're not thrilled about it, but at the end of it afterwards, they feel a lot better and they're ready for the summer. Do you, do you have anything to add? Yeah? I'm glad you're the one who had to do the sharing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. She was a little bit of a stinker about it. Gave me a hard time. Thank you guys um, for this live stream. Remember, everyone, we have live streams every day, every weekday at 12 p.m. EST. Um, so thanks for tuning in.